as Charles Girard, and I have coronary microvascular disease with vasospasms. My heart journey began in 2014. I was 54 years old, leading an active life when I suddenly lost vision of my left eye with an immense heat at the base of my neck. I spent three days in the hospital where I had blood test, AKG, stress test, a nuclear test, and the cardiologist confirmed I have ischemia and finished be it telling me, uh, well, there's nothing for you to worry about, go home. Sent me home, no medicine. The following two weeks I spent, I went to the hospital three times because I couldn't function. Making my bed was barely all I could do in a day. The chest pains, the brain fog, the fatigue were constant and crushing. Shortness of breath and spasms were relentless. I was repeatedly dismissed by ER doctors and cardiologists. I was prescribed antidepressant for ischemia with an AKG showing ST depression. Finally, cardiologist number six believed in me, sent me for more tests and gave me a diagnosis of microvascular angina with, and started treatment. I was able to return to work after three years on full disability. I now understand my triggers. I don't fear exercising anymore because I know how to warm up and I enjoy life. I still have limitations, but I understand my triggers. Adjust myself as, as we go along, life is good again. Hello everyone, my name is Moal Kalap and I'm a cardiovascular research scientist at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. In support of the Wear Red Canada campaign, here with us is Dr. Tara Sedlak, a cardiologist and clinical associate professor at the University of British Columbia. Dr. Sedlak is an expert in women's heart disease. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with her about a specific heart-related condition named microvascular dysfunction. Thanks so much for being with us today, Dr. Sedlak. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Dr. Sedlak, what is microvascular dysfunction and how is it reflected in women's heart disease? Yeah, great question. Um, well, I think traditionally it was thought that heart disease was number one, was a man's disease, and number two, that it was predominantly due to disease in the large blood vessels surrounding the heart. And in those large blood vessels, they would have clot or plaque or narrowing, and that would cause a, a lack of blood supply to the heart. But we now know that in women, up to 30% of the time, when women have chest pain or symptoms of a lack of blood supply to the heart or testing that shows a lack of blood supply to the heart, it's not actually the large blood vessels that causes this. It's actually the small micro blood vessels or the tiny blood vessels we can't even see with our eye. And those can become dysfunctional, blocked, narrow, they can even spasm, and that can cause a lot of symptoms and also put them at risk of future events such as heart attack and stroke. What symptoms can women present with when suffering from heart-related microvascular dysfunction? Yeah, that's a great question. So I still think that most commonly women present with chest pain and that chest pain can be described differently than men. It can be described as an ache or a tightness or a pressure and it can be central or it can be left-sided. They can have lots of pain uh, down the left arm or down both arms. They can have pain up into the jaw or jaw pain. And actually lots of these women have actually been to their dentist four or five times and said that they have jaw pain and yet there's nothing wrong at the, den at the dentist. Now, in addition to all of that pain, they can have uh, other symptoms. So they can have lots of shortness of breath, lots of fatigue, sweating, and uh, occasionally they can also have neurological uh, symptoms such as uh, fainting or stroke-like symptoms if it's involving their brain. Oh, good to know. Um, what sort of treatments are available for this condition? Yeah, so I really like to um, put the treatment into two different buckets. And the first bucket is trying to prevent a future event, heart attack, stroke, heart failure in these women. And the way that we uh, attempt to do this is by number one, controlling their risk factors. So controlling their blood pressure, or controlling their cholesterol, if they're diabetic, making sure their sugars are well controlled, stopping smoking. 
but also um, getting them into an exercise program, I think is extremely important. And many of these women are fearful of exercise. They have lots of symptoms when they exercise. And so getting some advice through a healthy heart clinic or a cardiac rehab clinic or a practitioner about how far they should push, how much chest pain they should push through, what heart rate should they go to, how long should they exercise for is very important. So all of that is in the first bucket of trying to reduce an event in the future. The second bucket is trying to control symptoms. And these symptoms can be refractory. They can be really terrible, chest pain throughout the day, chest pain at waking them up at night. And so trying to get them on appropriate medication that can try and reduce the chest pain, but also thinking about other therapies. So um, seeing a psychologist or psychiatrist and thinking about cognitive behavioral therapy or neuroplasticity and trying to sort of rework the nerves that control the heart. Um, again, trying to get into an exercise program. And uh, finally, there's alternative therapies such as a TENS machine that they can wear that can help with the pain, or they can even see a pain clinic and can get some therapies through that. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. Um, our last question is, if an individual is concerned, they may have microvascular dysfunction. What should they do? Yeah, great question. I think traditionally small vessel disease has been really hard to diagnose and hard to recognize, and it still remains that way. And so I think first and foremost, they need to see their family practitioner, uh, get all of their risk factors checked, so their blood pressure, cholesterol, get screened for diabetes. They need to obviously talk about their symptoms with their family doctor and um, try to get some workup done, initially for large blood vessel disease. Large blood vessel disease is still one of the most common uh, causes of heart disease, even in women. And um, undergoing a workup for that is extremely important. Now, if they've seen a, a cardiologist, seen an internist, um, had a workup done by their family doctor and all of that is normal, then I think it's really important for them to advocate for themselves and try to move on to the next level. And that might be seeing a women's heart specialist, getting into a women's heart center, getting into a specialist who knows about uh, this disorder and uh, who can uh, go through some of the testing with them. Um, the other aspect to things is that, you know, if they're remote and can't get to some of these places, number one, there's health, telehealth now, which is great. But number two is that um, their practitioners can start them on some of the therapies we talked about and see whether or not it's helping. And if it is helping, well, then you're probably going in the right direction. And it's not esophageal. It's not peptic ulcer disease. It's not muscular. It is, in fact, heart related. And because, you know, it's not the large blood vessels, it probably is the small blood vessels. But really, at the end of the day, I really want to underscore how much advocacy is needed. I would like to think we advocate on behalf of these women. But really, you know, a lot of them are advocating for themselves with their family practitioners, with their cardiologists, with their internists to really try and get the diagnosis. So I think that's very important. Yeah, totally agree with that. Thank you so much, Dr. Sedlak, for taking the time explaining some of the information about heart-related microvascular dysfunction experienced by women. We want you to be mindful, curious, and proactive in the management of your heart health and wellness. Because to take care of others, you need to first take care of yourself, stay safe, and heart healthy. To learn more about the unique aspects of heart disease in women and what you can do, visit wearredcanada.ca or speak with your healthcare provider and join us on February 13th for Wear Red Canada. Mm -hmm.